Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're going to talk about how we can write a simple Selenium test automation framework using ChatGPT4 without writing even a single line of code. I mean, I really mean it. We are going to write a complete Selenium test automation framework using all the best practices and patterns without even writing a single line of code. That is what we're going to be discussing in this particular video. So in order to do that, I'm going to first start our application and then I'm going to start using the Selenium Recorder IDE to generate the code for us using the interaction that we used to do from the UI. I'm going to copy paste the code into the chat GPT-4, not the three that we can use with the free version. I have the chat GPT plus version. So I'm going to use the four to generate the code and I will show you how awesome the code generates in four as compared to chat GPT 3.5. I'll show all these things in this particular video. So in order to do that, I'm gonna first jump in my application and then I'm gonna start the application right now. And the application is gonna start up. So I'm gonna take this particular URL and I'm gonna to go to Chrome browser over here because I have got the extension there, the Selenium IDE. And I'm gonna launch the Selenium IDE over here. I'm gonna record a new project over here and I'm gonna call this as product app and I'm going to paste the URL that I've just copied. I'm going to start the recording. And you will know that this is an IDE of Selenium, which is available for free of cost that you can directly install as a Chrome plugin. And then you can start recording the code. It is going to be very, very helpful for you. Not only just record the interaction, but also generate the interaction code with any language that you're looking for. For example, Selenium C Sharp, you can also do that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to go to the product. I'm going to hit the product over here. I'm going to say motherboard, motherboard for Asus and I'm going to say 2000 and it's going to be a fairy pearl. I'm going to hit create. And then I'm going to just do a details just to do some verification here. And then I'm going to go to back to list and then I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to delete that particular motherboard, which I've just created. So that is the recording that I'm going to be doing. And once the recording is done, you will notice that the same recording available over here in the Selenium IDE as well. So now if I just go and try to stop the recording and I'm going to give a name as create product. And then if I try to run this test, you will notice that it is going to do the exact same interaction that we just did. So this is how the Selenium IDE is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click, export this code into Selenium C Sharp X unit and I'm going to export it to my downloads location and I'm going to save this. So this is going to save the code for me and I'm going to open this in my VS code and I'm just going to show you all this code that I have created, right? So this is the whole code that I have created. So I'm basically going to copy paste this code in the chat GPT version 3.5 and I will show you how the code is going to look like and then I'm also going to show you how the same code is going to look like in chat GPT version 4.0 for that I'm going to go to chat GPT over here so the default model is chat GPT version 3.5 and I'm going to say write a page object model code in Selenium C sharp for the code which I have generated with separate Selenium driver class file for driver initialization with different browser type. I have also given some more commands to generate the code with a separate Selenium driver class file and also accept a different browser type, not just the Chrome browser, but also with Firefox and other browser types. So I have did all those things over here. And you will notice that with the plus version, the code generator is a bit faster, like it is writing things much faster for me over here. So you can see that there is a separate Selenium driver class file and there is a constructor which accepts the browser type as the enum type. And then it is also writing a simple switch case statement there to perform those operation. And you can see that this is the enum for the browser type. Amazing, right? And it has also created a product page for us over here, which does these operation. And then there is a main method which performs these operation. But you can see that there is this page navigation is completely missing over here. And it has also put all this code over here in same class file, something like this. But now let's say if I move from chat GPT version 3.5 to the plus version, which is the chat GPT 4, let's see how the code is going to be generated over here. So if I go to GPT 4 and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And if I hit enter, you'll notice that the actual code generation is a bit slower than version 3.5 but it actually thinks a lot more than compared to version uh, 3.5 itself. You'll notice that 
To implement the page object model pattern in Selenium C Sharp, we'll first need to create a product page, a create product page, and then a Selenium driver class file with a different browser type. So it just analyzes all the different uh, complexities and the instructions that we have given. And then it is writing very neatly for each and every class file. And then it is also trying to create a product page over here. And you will notice that within the product page, it is trying to accept the Selenium driver. And then it is trying to perform the operation for us. So this is really, really cool. I mean, now the code that it is writing is pretty much like a product page because you saw that the UI actually has got a product page and it also got a product list page. So it is trying to separate them out over here. And you see that there is a create product page which has the actual products as well. While this is writing the code for us, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to try to see if this code is really working fine for us or not. So I'm gonna go and quickly try creating a new project, Selenium X unit add the dependency for Selenium because that is required. And now I'm gonna go and copy paste the code that is as generated. So I'm not gonna write even a single line of code here. I'm just going to copy paste the code which is written over here, but with a bit of structure here really. I'm gonna say directory as driver. And then this driver class file, we're gonna call it as Selenium driver. That was the class name which it actually generated. So I'm gonna copy paste that over here, simple. Uh, and then I'm gonna go here, it says product page. So I'm gonna go create a new product, uh, like pages directory. Um, and that I'm gonna create a class file called as product page. And then I'm gonna copy the code from here and I'm gonna paste it over here. Maybe we need the namespace, so there we go. And let's try to add the references, which is cool. And we have a create product page, which we have not copied yet. So I'm gonna go here and copy the create product page. Go right click, create product page, and I'm gonna paste that code as well. I'm gonna save it. Cool, and then it has also given as the test code, which you need to actually run in order to make sure that the code actually works for you or not. But you know what, I'm not really happy with this particular line of code. Probably I'm gonna ask here that, uh, can you try, writing the code with X unit test framework. So now that I wanted to really write with X unit because I am not very happy with the uh, main method because I'm not really gonna do all those things over here. And you can see that once I tell it, it also start writing the code for me in X unit and also giving me the suggestion that you need to have X unit, X unit Visual Studio plugin like for the runner. And now it's also telling me like how I need to initialize uh, the Selenium driver. And also it tells me very interestingly that I also need to dispose the object. So I need to implement the IE disposable interface there. So everything is being covered there. So I think the code is gonna come up. I'm very lazy enough to really write any of the code because as I told you, I'm not gonna write even a single line of code, but we're gonna create like a framework structure here. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go here. Uh, and the line, the name is product test. So. I can probably rename it later on. I'm gonna give this over here and add the missing references. And you can see that there is something like expected condition. So this expected condition is not really working for us. So probably I'm just gonna comment it for now. We'll get back to that one later on. But you can see that the score so far it has generated is kind of legal. Um, so the assertion part is gonna be a bit failure there. And I'm just gonna save this code and let's try to run this code and see if this code actually works or not. So I'm just gonna run this test. So let's see if this is gonna launch a browser and I'm gonna start running the test for me. So you will notice that it has opened the browser but it has actually failed uh, to click the product link there. And I guess the reason is because it has really missed a method to use because the go-to method is kind of missing. So maybe this is one of the things that you probably need to write. So again, I know that this is like we told that we're gonna write like a zero line of code, but uh, looks like we definitely need to write a bit of code here as well because uh, because we tried asking a lot of question here. So it is trying to miss some of the points. Uh, I guess the earlier code that it has written over here was actually correct as you can see over here. It has written the code for us, but uh, while we asked the second question in the prompt, it just missed the go-to uh, uh, method. I guess that is one of the problem. So let me try to run this again and see uh, if AI has written us correct code or not. You will notice that it is actually working fine over here. It could able to 
perform those operations for us over here. So you can see that because we have not really waited for uh, this particular element to be available, the test is actually failing. So you know what, I'm actually going to remove this particular part alone. We'll get back to that point later. But as of now, you can see that this code which it has generated is actually correct for us. So this is cool. So now even if I try to run this one more time, you will notice that the test is going to pass and it is working as expected, which is cool. So we have already written a quite reusable code over here. But the next question which I naturally uh, comes is like, what if I wanted to pass like multiple data over here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask pulling the test data from app settings dot JSON file with 10 sets of data. I'm going to hit enter. So now I'm asking ChatGPT to create like a data-driven testing as well because I don't, I'm not very happy with just this particular hard-coded data that we really have. So I wanted this to be like a data-driven testing. So I'm going to do that as well for my X unit test. So let's see what it is really suggesting us. So it is telling me that I actually need to install this Microsoft.extensions.configurations JSON and the binder. So let me go and do that over here. Um, I'm gonna go to the NuGet package and I'm gonna install this as well. And I'm also need to install the binder, that's what it's saying. So, so it's all installed right now. So we'll see if that is working fine for us or not. So I'm gonna go to ChatGPT again and you can see that it has created a simple uh, product uh, test data XML file, JSON file for us. So I'm gonna go create a file i'm gonna call it app settings dot json and i'm gonna paste that over here but as of now we just have two data which is fine and i'm gonna right click properties and within this over here i'm gonna say copy if newer because we need to change that setting alone and you can see that it also has given us a product test data class file to deserialize into a json file cool so i'm gonna go create a model and within this, I'm gonna create a class file. The name is product test data. And I'm going to paste them over here. It says in your product test class, you need to just update this particular app settings or JSON file as well. So, which is great. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna copy this whole code which you have written. And I'm gonna to go to this test file. Uh, and I'm going to just paste them all over here. Cool. I'm again going to leave this assertion part for now, which is great. And you can see that the code which it has generated as of now is kind of legal. So it has got all those things for us over here. Cool. So I'm gonna save this code and let's see if this code actually works for us or not. So I'm going to uh, go to the test, which is this guy, and I'm going to run the test. Oh, there we go. It is just failing and it is saying that it's unable to locate. I think the problem is again the same classical problem. We got to be going to the product page dot go to and let me run the test once again. And you'll notice that it is doing what it is expected to. So it is great. So it is already doing that for us. Note that while it generated the code, it has also did a lot of things for us. As you can see, it is trying to uh, pass the product uh, test a constructor with a configuration reader. It is also trying to read all the configuration by deserializing the JSON uh, app settings or JSON value into a product test data, which is amazing. And it has also tried creating a member data for the get test data method. And this guest test data method is nothing but the method that it has written over here with the i enumerable object type, which is something that you can do in the X unit word much, much easily. And then it is trying to deserialize it, uh, like it is trying to get the section value of the product test data. And then it is trying to pass everything in the yield return of the new object. And then you get the data here, which is then gonna pass as a parameter over here. You know what, I'm also gonna tell the chat GPT to do one more thing for me. So I'm gonna go to chat GPT and I'm gonna tell that uh, convert the method which we have written, the create product method to accept a type instead of parameters. 
So now we'll see that instead of we trying to pass it like a multiple different parameters, like individual parameters, we now wanted to make like a the product test data itself to be passed uh, as a parameter so that we could able to reduce the number of line of code that we, I mean, number of parameter that we try to pass in over there. That's what we are going to be doing. That's what we're telling essentially to ChatGPT to do it for us. And you will notice that instantly it has started writing the create product method for us in a way that we could able to pass the product test data itself which is amazing so i'm going to copy this particular method i'm going to go to our pages over here and instead of passing so many parameters i'm going to replace that to this method as you can see it has just the product test data type and this is what is being passed as a parameter there so everything is quite awesome and now with the unit test one, you can notice that it is asking me that you gotta be changing that in the unit test as well by passing just the test data. So I'm gonna replace that to just the test data over here. And yeah, there we go. Now it is trying to do all those things, uh, telling me a lot of things there. I'm not really worried about all those things. So I'm gonna run this test and see if that code is really working for me or not. And you will notice that this code is also working fine for us. So this is how you will notice that within uh, maybe like five minutes, I have really created a lot of code here, everything generated for us without me writing even a single line of code. You'll also notice that you can ask some more questions. For example, if you're pretty new to this framework structure and you wanted to present this framework structure to somebody uh, who wanted to see in a diagrammatical view, you can also tell them. So you can say like, create a diagrammatic view of the above code that we have written. I'm just asking pretty much like a layman so that anybody could try to understand what it is. So you will notice that it is starting to write a class diagram kind of structure for us. And it is telling me that this particular product test data, this is the class type. And then it has got these type of product pages. Uh, and there is a product page and there is a create product page. And what is the initialization really happening over there? and you will notice that this is amazing you can just copy this thing and then you there are so many generators available to make this particular structure as an image or whatever and then you can put this in the github page anybody can understand your framework with zero, zero knowledge in what you have written in much much easier fashion so this is mind-blowing all i have did here is copied the code which is generated by Selenium IDE, copy paste it into ChatGPT, ask a lot of questions here, pretty much like an interaction, and it has generated a lot of code for me. I can keep asking a lot more question as well. Not only these questions, I could ask something like dependency injection, try to deploy this code in the GitHub actions, and also try to uh, run them, uh, like what are the things that which are required to run this test in the Selenium grid, uh, in the Docker container, I've tried them all and those are working fine as well. So now you can see that the number of hours and number of uh, time that we spend to write these kind of code has tremendously reduced. All you need is to command and you get the response back. So this is amazing and very, very scary as well. But you can see that if you have a good understanding of how to write a better Selenium code and how to write a code in a much, much, uh, sophisticated and patterned manner and you know what you are trying to get the response from chat gpt then i'm sure that this is going to be a game changer because all you have did is ask the question you sit back and relaxed how you can write the data driven testing page update model code driver pattern builder pattern code everything is coming for you over here I mean, I can ask a builder pattern, write a builder pattern code for Selenium driver. It could be able to write that for me instantly as well. But everything is happening for us pretty amazingly in less than very, very short span of time. So this is how you can see that we could able to write a Selenium framework code without even writing a single line of code just to have a bit of understanding of how these things are working should be much, much more than enough for you to write a complex code with much better pattern in much, much lesser time. That's it guys, just think about all these things and tell me what you think about all these things which ChatGPT and these large language models are doing to us. 
is it really going to be a game changer or is it a boon or a ban let me know in your comments below we could probably discuss about that in our next video thank you